Hello everyone and welcome back to this Football Manager experiment where we swap the top leagues with the bottom leagues. Now it, you might not be able to see it from this screen because we have already done five parts of this experiment so you should go back and watch those if you're seeing this for the first time. But quite a lot has happened and as you can see a lot of the bigger teams have retaken their positions at the top of the Premier League table. Manchester City especially have carried on as if nothing ever happened. Now Newcastle have been the main beneficiary from all of this. They won the title five years in a row in a brilliant little spell for the Geordie club. Um, Manchester City have returned them and won the last two titles. Newcastle slipping down the table because they're not signing the right players. Um, and you can see the results of some of the bigger teams now actually losing pace with some of the non-league teams who came up. Welling at the moment, the highest ranked non-league team in 11th place in the Premier League. But West Ham getting relegated after just coming back up from the Championship. Um, so some of these non-league teams are starting to strengthen quite a bit. Um, and when we left off last time, if we drop down the leagues a little bit, um, we will see that it's not the Premier League teams coming straight back up. Liverpool actually finishing down in 5th place in the league, but Bishops Stortford uh, finishing above them in the championship, um, and some of them just flirting down towards the bottom end of the table like Stoke. Um, and there's still a few teams even further down the leagues in Skybet League 1. Manchester United did win the league, but Bournemouth are still down there, struggling to get out of the league. And in League 2, we can see that... Southampton sitting in mid-table, Leicester, the former Premier League champion, sitting in ninth place now. Um, and there are still a couple of teams down in the Vanarama National League as well who are struggling to get out two at a time. Um, Hull, Swansea, Crystal Palace and Watford all still in there, but there is a big gap between them and the rest of the teams. And of course, down in the Vanarama National League North, we've got Sunderland, who are the lowest ranked former Premier League team at the moment. Other than Middlesbrough, actually, the other North East team currently sitting in the regional divisions because they got relegated from the bottom league in the first season and have just never come back. They're still not in the Vanarama National League North and it will be interesting to see if they ever do come back. Um, but Sunderland will join the rest of the lower tier Premier League teams in the National League next season. There will be five teams left in the National League. Um, so still sitting outside of proper league football. Um, so what we're going to do today is jump forward two more years. We'll take a look at the league tables, where everybody is. We'll also take a look at some of the squads and the facilities this time, because some of you requested that information. If you do have bits of information you want to see in the next part, if we do another part, do let me know in the comments. I'm always happy to take a look. But let's go forward two years in time and see where they are. Well, we are now two more years in the future, and as you can see, less, uh, Manchester City have once again won the Premier League title. Newcastle finishing in second place, not able to catch up with them. Arsenal actually finishing in third. Chelsea and Spurs still finishing down in the fifth and sixth places. Norwich doing quite well, finishing in fourth. Um, further down the table, you can see Whitehawk, another non-league team, have progressed into the top ten this time. Welling sitting down in 13th, and Eastbourne Borough and Chelmsford also down towards the bottom. Wolves, Brighton and Cuba are all the teams go down so no non-league teams got relegated this season. Well in the championship you can see that Manchester United did manage to win the championship getting another successive promotion. It'll be interesting to see if they can have a go at Manchester City at the top of the Premier League because they were sitting down there struggling to get out of the bottom tier for a long time but as soon as they did they triggered a run right up to the top level now. Successive promotions the entire way. Um, as you can see, just going up just that one season where they finished second in the Vanarama National League and didn't go up. Um, but then they did and they've been on a constant run of promotions with Roy Keane in charge of the club. Uh, West Ham also bouncing back to the Premier League through the playoffs. Ebsley and Bishop Stortford still down in the playoffs as well. Liverpool languishing in 12th place. Stoke down there in 20th as well, not managing to get out of the league. And in League One, you can see Bournemouth did manage to finish as champions. Hampton and Richmond also getting back into the championship. Swindon going up as well. Um, other Premier League teams in here. Um, I can't actually see one. I think that might be it for League One. Cardiff down there. We can get relegated as well. But no other Premier League team in this league, which is quite interesting. It's rare that there's only one team in the league. And in League Two, you can see that Burnley won the championship that season. West Brom also managing to get promoted into League One alongside Wilston and Leicester making it into that league as well. Southampton still down there in eighth place, not managing to get out 
of the league. Poole nearly getting relegated, but it was Port Vale and Exeter who went down. I think Poole would be the first non-league team to fall out of the football pyramid, if I remember right. And in the Vanarama National League, you can see it's still the Premier League cohort right at the top. A big gap between them and the rest of the division. Uh, Swansea winning the title, going up with Crystal Palace. But Sunderland finishing in 15th place. They've managed to avoid relegation at least, but they have not put on any kind of show that makes me think they're going to be charging into the Premier League anytime soon. And just to check, there is no middle spread in the Vanarama National League North. And there is no Middlesbrough in the Vanuama National League South, not that they would be. Um, but ju always just worth checking. There's obviously this league starting to look exactly the same as before. So unless Sunderland drop out of the Vanuama National League, I think I'll stop looking at these bottom two leagues. Now, in the current season, Manchester City did manage to win the title yet again. They've won it quite a bit now. I think if we look at the past winners, this is now their fourth title in a row. They're looking to challenge Newcastle's dominance, who so finished third three out of those four seasons, which is a bit of, bit of a shame. Um, they did finish 14 points behind them this season, but Barnsley, the team to finish third, that is interesting. Chelsea and Arsenal falling down into the other positions, but Arsenal managing to qualify for the Champions League, which means they must have won a European competition this season. Um, now, Manchester United did get promoted, but were unable to break into those European places, currently sitting in ninth place. Um, but no non-league teams in the top 10. Whitehawk finishing 12th, Chelmsford down in 15th, Easterbourne Borough just avoiding relegation by two points ahead of Welling. But Spurs have been relegated to the Championship, which is quite interesting. They have not managed to kick on and progress after finishing reasonably high up last season. They may have even qualified for Europe, but they have now been relegated. And if we just have a look at the stadiums in the Premier League, we can see that obviously Old Trafford, the biggest new White Hart Lane, still got built. City still at the City of Manchester Stadium. None of the Premier League um, stadiums actually changing that much. You've still got Villa and Hillsborough and Ellen Road, Pride Park, Cower Road, uh, Lionel Road for Brentford, the John Smith Stadium, the Medeski, and right at the bottom, these non-league teams despite being in the Premier League now for a long time are still in their same stadiums they've been expanded to what is the Premier League minimum but they've not moved to a new one and Priory Lane is still playing on synthetic turf but obviously these are grass and, grass and synthetic mixes but that's quite interesting that they're allowed to do that in the Premier League and just a quick look at the major transfers. As you can see, Manchester City continuing to strengthen the squad. Uh, a couple of very big signings there, including Laporte from Dortmund, Fabiano coming in from AC Milan. Um, otherwise, Newcastle actually selling players to Atletico Madrid and not really replacing them with big names either, which is the reason they're really struggling. The year before that, um, it was mostly players leaving the club, actually, leaving the league, actually, going to Barcelona, Shangdang, Zhangzhou. PSG as well. The biggest Premier League signing was actually by Welling, who brought in Carl Collier from Barnsley. And just taking a quick look at the Premier League Champions squad, as you can see, if we sort them by general information, you can see Thibaut Courtois still in the Premier League, playing for Man City now, but he's 34 years old. Um, a few youngsters in here. If we sort them by the oldest, actually, we'll see Eden Hazard at Manchester City. He's only worth 200k now. Um, Digny, Semedo, Eric Dyer, Laporte in there, all over 30. John Stones and Raheem Sterling in their early 30s now. Kingsley Coman, 29, still at the club. Uh, Gabriel Hayes is still there as well. And then you start to get into some of the regens. Um, but it looks like the regens are where the money is now. £67 million angle Emas at Manchester City. A striker with incredible stats. Um, no wonder they're winning the league with a striker like that in the team. Uh, £58 million Manuel Fernandez in centre midfield looks incredible as well. So Manchester City are winning the league because they're going out and splashing on these huge players. And if we take a look at Whitehawk, the highest finishing non-league team, and sort their team by value, you can see that their values are not that high. Eagle Medioros from Barcelona, the highest rated player. He's a decent player, but he's not the same level as some of the Manchester City players we were just looking at. And he plays an attacking central midfield. Um, You've then got 22-year-old Abul Kamaj, who also plays in the same position. So their two highest-valued play players are actually competing for each with each other for 
playing time. Nicholas Bunn also in there plays on the right wing. Not that great a player. And that's why they're struggling down there. They have not been signing the big names that they need to to maintain a position in the Premier League. And I think eventually we will see all of them drop out of the top tier of English football. Now in the Championship, Ebbsfleet did get promoted. A non-league team is going back into the Premier League. Birmingham and Wolves, the two Midlands teams, also going up there. Bishop Stortford and Western Superman, the two non-league teams finishing up in the playoffs. Liverpool still down there, struggling in 10th place. Stoke down in 17th. Everton in 19th. Bournemouth getting relegated back down to League One. Now if we have a look at the facilities in the Championship, we will see that the big... Old teams are still up the top, but Oxford City are the highest non-league team. They have now got a 25,000-seater stadium, which is pretty good. They did win the Premier League in the first te first season. The only non-league team to have won a Premier League title. Margate down there in their 12,000. All of these non-league teams that were in the Premier League now in their 12,000-seater stadiums. Um, Bournemouth still down in 11,500 stadium. And the big transfers, unsurprisingly, all going to Manchester United as they look to get promoted. These have happened in the last year, um, but still showing up in the transfers for this season. If we go to the current season, we'll see that some of the newer teams are starting to buy players, but not quite at the extent that we might like to see. And in League One, Hemel Hempstead have managed to get promoted alongside Sheffield United, who won the league quite convincingly. Ipswich also going up. West Brom finishing down in 14th place, Leicester in 18th, and Burnley getting relegated back down to League Two. So this is where some of these teams who have taken a bit of time to get up the football pyramid are really hitting their level and are going to struggle to break out of this position. Um, sitting down in these mid-table positions, they need to be finishing convincingly near the top of the league, but they're not able to do it well. They're non-league teams who are still getting possibly parachute payments or have a bit of financial investment in the club because of their new position are actually doing reasonably well. I mean, Hemel Hempstead have got £133 million valuation, which is pretty good for a League One team. And in League Two, you can see Swansea have managed to get out of League Two. They're now going up into League One. Uh, Truro also going back up a division. Other teams down here, Crystal Palace not managing to make it out of the first time of asking. Poole finishing in eighth place. Um, Portsmouth and Scunthorpe getting relegated. So there's still no non-league teams outside of the league football um, areas, the professional sort of football league areas. Southampton still down there in mid-table as well. Wigan down there now. Uh, Cardiff down there, Cambridge sitting in 16th place. And in the Vanarama National League, you can see two more Premier League teams did get promoted. So now the only Premier League team left in non-league football is Sunderland, which I am happy to see as a Newcastle fan. Um, they have at least progressed up the table, getting promoted a couple of years ago, now sitting in sixth. I think they will get out of non-league football. It might just take them a little bit of time. Now, if we take a look at the Champions League for the season before this one, you can see that Juventus did win the Champions League against Monaco. In the semi-finals, Manchester City beaten by Juventus, but good to see they did make the semi-finals. And in the quarter-finals, just Manchester City in there from the English clubs. In the first knockout stage, three English clubs did make it, Arsenal being beaten by Juventus, Newcastle by PSG, Manchester City managing to get convincingly past Atletico Madrid. And in the current season, you can see that Manchester City made the knockout stages. Newcastle also made it, but the third English team did not. So, but both of these teams did progress to the quarterfinals. Um, if we have a look at those, we'll see that Manchester City got knocked out by PSG, but Newcastle made the semi-finals of the Champions League, beating Dortmund. And then in the semi-finals, they were beaten by PSG. At AS Monaco also progressing, so in all French Champions League final, which was won by PSG. If we have a quick look at the past winners of this competition, you can see PSG now beating Monaco, who've lost two years in a row in the final after finishing as winners twice already. Um, Juventus also in there, but no English teams making the final now since Chelsea won it all the way back in 2011-2012. That was 14 years ago. Uh, so 14 years since an English team made the final of the Champions League. Now, if we drop down and look at the stages first, but then drop down to the Euro Cup. We can see Arsenal actually managed to win the Euro Cup this season, um, beating Inter Milan, the first bit of silverware for an English team, I think. They managed to beat Chelsea in the semi-finals as well. In the quarterfinals, uh, just the two English teams, and in the last 16, um, 
Tottenham were also in there, obviously got relegated this season as well. Arsenal and Norwich also getting knocked out as well. Now, the season before that, it was Sheffield Wednesday in there alongside Chelsea. Only Chelsea progressing to the quarterfinals. In the quarterfinal stage, they beat Lyon to make it to the semis. In the semi-finals, beating Leverkusen, so they did make the final. And in the final, they were beaten by Dortmund, just missing out on being the first English club to win this competition since we made the changes. In the past winner screen, you can see, oh no, Manchester City actually won it in 2019-20 when they were down in lower leagues as well. I forgot all about that, which means that Arsenal, the second team to win the Europa League, hopefully a springboard for Champions League success for a Premier League team. They haven't been making the semi-finals now. It's just about breaking into that final stage. Um, so we'll be interested to see if they manage to do that in the future. Now let's just have a look at the English competitions. And if we start with the season before last in the FA Cup, that was won by Norwich, another bit of silverware for them. Um, and this season it was won by Newcastle, who are managing to keep the silverware flowing. If we look at the past winners, Newcastle have now won the FA Cup three times, the most of anybody since the changes were made. Obviously Chelsea and Liverpool were still winning these competitions down in non-league football um, back in the day because they still had their big players. City and United are making grabs for the top Cup competition in English football. Um, but the EFL Cup was won by Ebbs Fleet, which is nice to see a non league team winning it for the first time. I don't think a non league team has won the FA Cup either. No, they haven't. So it's the first time that a non league team has won major silverware since Oxford won the Premier League in the first season. It's the first time that's happened, which is really nice to see that they are now strengthened to the point where they can challenge for the cup competitions, if not the league and European competitions in the future. Um, so that is going to be it for this episode. I think doing it two years at a time is getting a little bit stale now that the Premier League teams are all out of non-league football and the Premier League is now made up of them as well. So what I'm going to do instead is jump forward five years in time next time and we'll see how the Premier League is shaping up and non-league football is shaping up as well. Um, and if Premier League teams, because they will have been in this position for... Well, it must be 15 years by the point that we get five years ahead if they are stuck in the second, third and fourth tiers of English football or if they've managed to restore the balance and all get back up to the top. So let me know if you are interested in seeing that five years ahead video. Uh, let me know in the comments if there's other things you'd like me to take a look at. Uh, drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it and make sure to subscribe to see the next part. But until next time, see ya.